Hello everyone, so welcome to another MRCB Paces video. Today we are covering Station 5 and the top 3 mistakes that candidates make, which I am hoping you are not going to after this video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Vishal Kumar, I am a doctor in the UK. Um, do feel free to check out the rest of my channel on YouTube or go to keenmedic.com to find out more about me. In this video, we are going to be covering the top three mistakes okay so take a guess what these are and see if your three things match up against mine let me know what you think in the comments below let's get started first and foremost i think in my experience from what i have found is that a lot of candidates underestimate what do you think i mean by this so now a lot of you a lot of us in fact make the mistake of being really good clinicians now i'm saying this is a mistake because in station five and generally also all of paces you need to be a good clinician but you also need to be a good doctor those two are different things okay to be a good doctor, you need to be more holistic. To be a good clinician, you just need to be uh, knowledgeable and have good skills uh, in terms of your clinical skills, okay? So what I've found is that some of the strongest uh, candidates fall into the trap of just having perfect scores in clinical domains, okay? But when you look at their score sheet, they have really poor performances in areas of empathy. So these are the areas that show communication skills, that show empathy, that show that they are addressing the patient's concern and are actually uh, listening to the patients. In these areas, there are uh, they show really poor performance, and this is where they. Uh, fall short of gaining the marks and therefore passing the station and therefore passing paces itself. Remember that the patient is the center of everything that you're doing, okay? Now, while you may be tackling the station from the point of uh, your agenda, okay, uh, trying to get the history from the patient, trying to examine the patient of the relevant systems, trying to come up with a list of differentials and also, you know, um, having to answer the examiner's questions questions bear in mind that the reason why you are doing any of this is because the patient is not well okay the patient is not well and therefore it is really them you need to be uh, thinking about and basing everything that you are doing on so be safe but also show that you care listen to the patient allow them to talk give them the opportunity to ask questions check that they understand your answers and your explanations make sure you are safety netting allow them to answer questions and express their concerns again address those concerns you need to do all of this in every station five okay you need to be doing this regardless of, regardless of the fact that you are not in a communication station because in station five every single domain is examined including all of your communication the imbalance here is mainly of the time that's what i mean because remember in station five you are being examined on everything so what I've done is that I've created a specific video for you guys. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, do check it out here. I will link it just above here, okay? So it's a Station 5 time management. So in Station 5, this is what you need to be doing. There's plenty to do. There's history, the examination, explanations, concerns, investigation and management, and the question and answer with the examiners okay so there is a lot to do and how much time do you get to do all of this 10 minutes per case you get 10 minutes that's all you get that's why that i have developed a certain strategy for you to uh, have a look at so make sure you check out that video but this balance is actually not always the same in every single station you need to be very flexible when it comes to uh, this station so not all stations will uh, require to you require you to do exactly the same level of history versus examination uh, versus explanation 
it will all depend on what the patient has come in with and what the patient is actually like okay some of them may not need a lot of explanation uh, some of them will need a lot more talking to but regardless of what uh, they've come in with, they will all have their own concerns which you will have to deal with so this is coming back to my point to number one okay they will all have que uh, questions and they will all have concerns and you have to deal with all of them and lastly, the question and answer with the examiners. So this will last around two minutes for uh, each case. Uh, and in each of them, what you have to do is basically get straight to the point with the answers. OK, if they're asking you about what are your positive findings, don't start rambling on about your entire presentation. So my positive findings are and just list them out, okay? Just list them out one after the other and say, my diagnosis would be so-and-so, my plan is so-and-so. So keep to the point. Inattention is another issue. So with station five, there are two back-to-back -back cases, right? So it can be very difficult sometimes to remember exactly what's going on with each case, especially after you have moved on from case number one to case number two. So which is why you need the crib sheet. Uh, you will get a sheet of paper at the start of the station before you enter and you need to make the most of it. I will be creating a different video on this one, so do look out for that. What you need to be able to do is to disconnect from the past and not allow it to influence what you are doing right there and then, okay? So in your practice, what you have to do is mimic exactly what you are going to be doing in the real life exam and have two cases back to back and uh, not have feedback in between. This is of course towards the uh, later stages of your preparation. At the start, you won't be able to do it. Make sure um, at the start, your focus should be mainly on uh, performing station five um, to a comprehensive level and then move on to doing it within the time frame and then move on to doing two stations back to uh, two cases back to back within one station all right so this will allow you to disconnect from the past and let that go and perform to the best of your potential in the current case the one advice that i would give to you uh, and this is true for all stations where you have to talk so this is for station two station four and station five and it is that you should summarize to remind yourself but also the patient but also the examiner and this will allow you to check that the information that you have gained from the patient is correct and that you are not either duplicating it or misunderstanding it, okay, which will lead you down the wrong path. So summarizing is a very good way of making sure you are on the right path. Summarizing also doesn't have to be long. You can just summarize the very uh, relevant, very succinct points in two lines, and this will allow you also to take a break from the history and uh, think about the next steps okay so i hope you found this useful guys uh, if you want to learn more my book is now available on amazon it's called ace paces strategies for high achievers the link will be in the description below along with my paces course online which will also be linked below along with the free webinar that you can access i will see you in the next video